Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. J.M. Kimani. I welcome you to our topic, probability. Now, in probability, there are three subtopics. Namely, we have sets and set theory. Number two, we have probability. Uh, theory and uh, number three we have the probability distributions so these are the three subtopics that make this uh, topic uh, known as probability now we shall begin with the first one sets and set theory sets and set theory now <clears throat> we'll begin with the definition of a set as we go to the properties of a set then we go to the types of sets now a set is a collection of elements which are precisely defined for example we can talk of a family. Now, a family is a set as it has members who are related but themselves are also different, having the father, the mother, the children. So they make one set. Uh, we can also have uh, maybe a fraternity, maybe a congregation or either maybe in a particular place of work we can have that as a set because everybody like an employee uh, the managers and everyone in that company are bounded by some uh, maybe uh, qualities and um, uh, they are able to come up with uh, a, a company or either maybe a congregation so which we are calling it a fraternity there is that what uh, bind them and uh, that's what defines a set. Now, having known what is a set, let's look at properties of a set. These are properties of a set. Number one. Number one, the elements of a set are well defined, which is true. Like I said, about a family, we must define who are the members of this family. And that's why, should you bring another person who is not a member of a family, then it ceases to be a family. And therefore, the elements of a set must be well defined. Then number two. Number two. The elements of a set are unique. That is, an element should only occur once and no repetition. Meaning, there is not going to be any repetition in a set. For example, if we are talking of maybe a family, a family, uh, we talk of in terms of gender, we can talk of in terms of age. Should you have a member of a family who is in this category of gender, let's say, for example, the father and then we also have the same father in the category of age let's say we are talking of though, uh, those members of this family who are let's say above uh, 40 years so above 40 years you see now that father is going to be in this category as well as in the other category of age. Should you want to combine and have it as a family, we won't have a father repeated because of be belonging to the gender and belonging to the age. So we don't have any repetition. Just uh, for example, if you're having like let's say A, uh, B, C as elements uh, of a set and then we add to other elements like um, uh, A, uh, D, E. Though we are having A in every set, should we want to add this and come up with a complete set? So we should not 
repeat A. We should be having A, B, C, D, and E. You see the elements are appearing only once. There is not going to be repetition. And that's one of the properties of sets. Then the third one, number three, is that um, a capital letter represent the set, while small letters represent elements of a set. So should we want to refer to this as a set, then we can use a capital letter like A. So A referring to the set, and then we can have the elements of a set being A, B, C. So those, element, or those uh, items in the set are known as elements, and uh, we denote them using small letters, and therefore the whole uh, set is represented using a capital letter. Uh, this, let's say, was a set B, a set B, which had uh, A, uh, D, and E as the elements. And therefore we can talk of uh, the summation of this uh, being A, B, C, D, E as my set C. Assuming, so set C, which is our answer, we will have A, B, C, D, E. So these are the elements in a set, and this is the set. So capital letter for a set, and small letters for the elements. Then number four, the order in which the elements appear is not relevant. The order in which the elements appear is not relevant. For example, this set A, whether it is A, B, C, or it is in any other arrangement. For example, we can have A, B, C, or we can have A, C, B, or we can have B, A, C, etc. There are so many ways we can arrange these elements A, B, C in a set. But we are saying it does not matter uh, the arrangement. And therefore, should somebody arrange elements A, B, C in a manner to follow each other this way, or another person arranges the same three elements in this manner, B, A, C, the two people are talking of the same set. And therefore, we do not... Uh, we are not that keen with respect to the arrangement of elements, and that's something at note. Those are the properties of um, a set. Then to talk of uh, types of sets, types of sets. Uh, the first one, let's talk of um, the null set, a null set. So this one is denoted using either uh, we can talk of um, a circle and a slash or an empty bracket. So this is how we denote a null set. A circle with a slash or a, an empty bracket. Now what is a null set? Now a null set is a set with no elements or is an empty set. Now, why we require to know and uh, uh, maybe use null set is because sometimes you may want to add or you may want to subtract two sets and happen that the two sets have the same elements. And that, uh, that uh, the result will be a zero or either a null set. For example, let's say we have a set A with A, B, C minus set B with a B, A, C. You see now the result, which is set C, will be having nothing in the set because element A is in this set, in the two sets, and therefore it will cancel out. B as an element will also cancel because it is present in the two sets as well as C. So the result will be an empty uh, cell. Uh, an empty set, and therefore it is known as a null set. Then number two, we are having a finite set. A finite uh, set. Now, finite set is a set whose elements can be listed down in full. For example,